So take a look at this design. This right here is your typical flat design and flat design is what we've been involved in as UI UX designers for the last 10 plus years or so. And now we're starting to see a slight shift from flat design back into the more exciting times of design and that was in the web 2.0 era. So if you take this flat design, I'll show you a version that I created that kind of shows you what it would look like back in the web 2.0 era. There's a lot of gradients, there's a lot of reflections, shadows, all that type of stuff. And we overused it back then, which is why we saw the pendulum swing all the way to the opposite side into flat design. But now we're kind of seeing designers as a whole experiment with some of these elements more, but obviously in a modern way. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you. We're gonna take this flat design we can see what it was before in the web 2.0 version and then flat design version, of course, right here. Now, what's it gonna look like if we take the same design and we apply some UI aesthetics in a more modern sense? Let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, so here I am in Adobe Figma. This is, again, the very simple layout that I created. What I wanna do is just replicate this real quick. And one of the first things that I, is the, what is the most flat part about this design? Well, it's the background. It's completely flat. There's no texture. There's no background patterns. There's no photographs, whatever. Now, in a recent video, I showed how you can use Midjourney to create these abstract background images. And I think that would be a good starting point for kind of modernizing this and going away from flat design. So I have this element right here, and I'm going to simply drag it into here and then using my bracket key shift this yeah maybe right around there now this compared to this there's not a massive difference although there is some visual interest in the background this isn't to say that hey this is the modern way and this is the old way i'm still going to show you a lot more that we can modify about this design so that's a starting point um, in and of itself i think there's more changes that we can make so I'm gonna replicate that version. And one thing that we can do is I, within the past few years, we've seen this glassy effect or glass morphism, and we can apply that onto these cards. We don't have to, but we can. And I'll show you some other alternative stylings that look really cool as well. So if I take, for instance, just these uh, three backgrounds right here, and I choose effects, and then right down over here, I choose background blur, we get the settings out. We'll choose something like 20 or so. Now, nothing changes yet until we come over here to the fill, and then maybe we'll change that to 50. Ah, okay, so there we go. Now we can see the background, especially when the, high, the, the highlights of this background image go behind here. And so now we see this cool, so, cool sort of like glass morphism effect. And of course, you can tinker around with all those various parameters, such as the the color of this, this fill, you wanna make it a little bit more white, which I would not do, that doesn't look good. I think dark or black looks pretty good. And then of course this blue text does not look good at all, so we would wanna adjust that. All right, so we're, we're getting somewhere, I'm going from this so far to this. Now, one thing we could also do is maybe move this down, maybe rotate it even more. We could also position this, maybe this one up a little bit because this, this moves slightly. Now let's also take a look at the button. So the button is completely flat and let's create another version. Now this button, we're gonna do a lot more with. We're gonna do three different things, which will make a really cool aesthetic. So the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna take the fill and we're gonna get a color that's perhaps behind it. Yeah, that, that right there is really nice. It's like a mix between red and orange. So then what I wanna do is I wanna take that and I'm going to go to effects. We're gonna change this to background blur. Again, maybe around 20. And I'll adjust the fill percentage, maybe to 40. All right, so now we can see it back here a little bit better. Maybe we'll adjust this background blur back down to like 12. All right, there we go. And then I'm gonna add another effect down here. So I've hit plus. I'm going to specify 
Uh, yeah, we could do a drop shadow now. We can also certainly add a drop shadow in a modern sense. The big thing about shadows is making sure that they don't become the focal point. You want them to be a background element. So you don't want to make them something that stands out too much. So with the effects here, let's see, there we go. We go to our drop shadow. Uh, we'll take the Y, maybe increase that. And you can just barely kind of see it as I'm moving this up and down. Take our blur, make that even big, bigger. Um, let's take the opacity and then maybe just experimenting here in a very subtle manner. You want to get this right as much as possible. You want it to be kind of barely noticeable. Right here is pretty good. Look how cool that looks when we drag it over. Now the third thing, so because right now we have the blur, we have the drop shadow. A third thing that we can add here is uh, not a, a stroke. So if we go to stroke and maybe we'll change it to a linear gradient stroke, uh, this gets fun. So I, uh, oh, the, let's not apply that on the group. Let's do that on make sure on the frame. There we go. Uh, so this stroke changed it to a gradient. Let's position the gradient over here. And then the first color stop, um, we'll get maybe that color. All right, and then the second one, let's uh, get this color right there. Ooh, okay, so it's looking pretty interesting. We can add more color stops as well. Maybe make this one a little bit brighter at the edge. Now look at that. That is pretty freaking cool. Maybe push it, position it like right there. All right, so we're definitely making progress. So again, if I take this original flat design version, this is flat design. And this is kind of a more interesting modern aesthetic uh, that we can use. Let's, let's continue this on. So we'll take this and maybe we're gonna get rid of these blue things here. All right, so that simplifies the design a lot more do we have to stick with that? Not necessarily. Um, we could take all three of these real quick, move them up now that we have a little bit more space. There we go. And one thing that we can do as well is we could take each of these three backgrounds and I'm going to add a stroke there as well. So we can go ahead and use a gradient for that. Now I don't get the option to adjust the gradient direction or the angle because I have all three selected. You can modify that afterwards. So for this background here, um, let's see what this looks like. Uh, there we go. So something that doesn't stick stand out too, too much. As you can see, it's a very faint border around it. Um, maybe we can increase this here and then come over here and add maybe another highlight. Very subtle is kind of what you're going for. So now I could ch chain, take each one of these and real quickly just modify the gradient angle here or the stroke gradient angle, sorry. There, now we can see it. Yeah, there we go. So now we get out of there, do that one more time or rather, sorry. Two more, I cannot count. And there we go. Okay, very, 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 very cool. Now, another thing that we can do outside of this is we can also choose to take the background and just hide it. So now when we have those three selected, maybe we could change the stroke so again, we're gonna to have to select these right there and the stroke in here, we wanna be able to see, let's make this a little bit brighter. Let me zoom out. There 
This one, I'm gonna take the opacity all the way down. And I'm just trying to get like a nice little, kind of like a glassy beveled edge effect. There we go. At this point, yeah, pretty interesting looking. Perhaps you could take also the, uh, the icons, maybe give them um, this similar color. Oh yeah, this is really cool. So here's the original, kind of the flat design version. And then here's a variation that we created, which is kind of just having more fun. We have more tools at our disposal. Things like uh, borders, things like strokes rather, things like background textures, patterns. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we can do now that was perhaps previously frowned upon uh, back in the flat design days, but let's be honest, it's kind of boring at this point. We wanna be able to experiment and have fun with treatments. You just have to make sure that you're not being excessive about it. Kind of like how Web 2.0, everything had a gradient. Even the text had gradient. So I think we're going in a direction now where we're merging both of those worlds, but in a, in a way that makes sense where we're not, everything's being flat and then everything is being, you know, excessively just gradientized. <laughs> Anyhow, I wanted to do that video real quick. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If so, make sure to subscribe, check out designforce.com, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.